Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Microsoft Excel to conduct a fairly straightforward exercise in loan amortization. You might recall that loan amortization refers to how you as a borrower uh, repay the amount that you borrowed as well as the interest owed on it. And so most loans call for fixed uh, periodic payments, so maybe fixed monthly payments uh, or fixed yearly payments. And so I'm going to show you a how you can determine those fixed payments uh, using Excel, where again these fixed payments are meant to take care of both the principal and the interest. The second thing that I'm going to show you is how you can uh, construct the complete uh, what is known as the amortization schedule. Amortization schedule basically tells you uh, that over time, if you're making these fixed payments, what portion of these payments is going towards the principal and what portion of these payments is going towards paying off the interest. And so the amortization schedule can be helpful because it can show you how much is your outstanding balance or outstanding loan amount at a specific point in time. And the reason why that can be helpful is because oftentimes you may become sick of making uh, these periodic payments and you'd be like, you know what, just tell me, Mr. Bank, how much do I owe you after two years of making these payments? Uh, how much do I owe you? I want to take care of that amount in one big balloon or lump sum payment. And so the complete amortization schedule can help you understand what your outstanding balance is and therefore help you determine what your balloon payment will be. And so I'm going to show you how you can do all of that using Excel, using an example. So let's suppose it's September 1st, 2019, and you have just financed a 2019 BMW 5 Series, which has an MSRP or suggested retail price of $64,000. Now you've just financed it, and this is how you've gone about financing it. You've made a $5,000 down payment and you are borrowing the remainder from the BMW dealership, which is the 59,000. And the dealership has said, look, uh, the term of this loan is five years. The quoted rate is 6%. This is the APR, and it's gonna be compounded monthly. And because you're borrowing this $59,000 uh, for the next five years at an APR of 6% compounded monthly, you would need to make payments on this uh, amount that you're borrowing, the first payment is due one month from today, which is basically October 1st, 2019. So the first question is, how do you determine what your monthly payment will be on this loan? So that's the first part. And I'm uh, asking you to lay out the complete amortization schedule. So in other words, first we wanna find out what this monthly payment will be. And secondly, we wanna find out that if we make this monthly payment every month for the next five years, then every month, what portion of that payment is going to be going towards retiring the loan amount, which is 59,000, and how much of that is going to be going towards uh, paying off the interest. So here I'm depicting this entire situation on a timeline. This is time period zero, which is September 1st, 2019. This is where we are today. And it is here where we are borrowing $59,000. This is the loan amount. And then the bank is asking us to make periodic payments over the next 60 months. So we're gonna be making a payment payment over the next 60 months, which is five years, uh, such that these payments take care of not only the $59,000 loan, but also the interest of 6% uh, that is being charged on that loan as an APR. Now, uh, from a conceptual standpoint, we know that the present value of these payments, and this is like an annuity, the present value of these payments should be equal to $59,000, which is the loan amount. And so fortunately, uh, we can calculate these payments in Excel using something called the payment function, which is basically PMT. And so when you invoke this function, uh, this function basically asks you, you know, what is the rate that you're paying on your loan? Mind you, because you, these payments are gonna be on a monthly basis, the rate that you need to enter here should be a monthly rate as well. And so if the APR is 6%, which is being compounded monthly, then your monthly rate is gonna be 6% divided by 12, which is basically 0.5%. So that's the monthly rate. 
Similarly, the number of time periods is not five years, it's 60 months. So you have to be consistent. If the rate is in monthly terms, then the number of time periods needs to be on a monthly basis as well. And so over here, you can enter five um, multiplied by 12, which is basically 60. And then finally, it asks you, what is the present value, which we know is exactly equal to the loan amount. So I am going to enter this as negative one multiplied by uh, $59,000. And the reason why I have multiplied 59,000 by a negative one is so that uh, the payment output that comes out of this formula is a positive number. I want to see my payment as a positive number. Uh, the other things are not really important here. So specifically, uh, there is no extra payment that we're making in the future. So there's no future value. And this type of annuity is actually an ordinary annuity because the first payment you're making is at the end of uh, the first time period, which is or after one month. And so that is the default setting uh, in Excel anyway, that it's treating all these cash flows as if the first cash flow is occurring at the end of the period. So you don't need to worry about this one as well because that's the default setting. Uh, and so now when you close the parentheses and uh, press enter, it shows 1140, which basically means that if you want to pay off $59,000 over the next five years, then the monthly payment you would need to make is about $1,140 and 64 cents. This payment over time will take care of the $59,000 loan and the interest that you owe on it. Now that we've determined the monthly payment on this loan, we can actually proceed with constructing the complete amortization schedule. And again, the idea behind constructing an amortization schedule is to see not only what your monthly payments are going to be for the entire term of the loan, which is basically the entire 60 months, but the idea is also to see how much of those monthly payments are going towards retiring the principal and how much of those payments are going towards paying off the interest. If we are repaying some of the principal over time, then a related idea is to understand how our loan balance is changing over time. And so notice that I have pre-populated uh, these two columns which show the payment number and the date. So time period zero is today. This is where we're taking the loan. So the loan, pal loan balance at this point is simply $59,000. This is the amount of the loan that we've taken. Obviously, we're not making any monthly payment today. So today there's no payment, so zero, which means that we aren't paying any principal, we aren't paying any interest. So all the action is going to take place one month from now. Now the question is, how much is our monthly payment going to be over the next 60 months? Well, we actually just determined that. We use the payment function to figure out that our payment is going to be 1140. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do equal. I'm going to use the same formula. I'm going to do equal to payment. And then I'm going to use the rate of uh, 0.005, which is uh, basically 0.5%. That's 6% divided by 12. Uh, the number of time periods is 60 and the um, loan amount is negative 1 multiplied by $59,000. And so this gives me the same 1140.64. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to copy this formula and then I'm going to paste it all the way down to uh, 60 months. The idea being that our payment every month is going to be this fixed amount. Now the question is how much of this payment is going towards paying off the principal and how much of this is going towards paying off the interest? Well fortunately there is a function in Excel called PPMT which is basically short for principal payment. It's related to this payment function but the idea behind this formula is to show you how much of this payment is going towards paying off the principal. So PPMT, now when you invoke this function, it again asks you for the rate, which in this case is 0.5%, so basically 0.005. Uh, but then the one additional uh, input that this formula requires is PER, or period. Basically, Excel is asking you, look, you're going to be making these 1140 payments in month one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. And in each of those cases, uh, the amount that will be going towards paying off the principal is going to be different. So tell me 
which 1140 are you referring to? Are you referring to the 1140 that you're going to pay off in month one and asking me to tell you how much of that is going towards the principal? Or are you asking about, say, the 1140 that you're paying in month 10 and then asking me how much of that is going to go towards the principal? Now, in this case, of course, you're interested in answering, you know, how much of this 1140 that you're paying in month one is going towards uh, paying off the principal. So what I'm going to do is go give a cell reference to this guy right here, which tells, uh, which basically tells Excel that look, we are interested in finding out how much of the first payment of 1140 is going towards paying off the principal. So that's that. Uh, the nice thing about this cell reference is then when I'm going to copy this formula and paste it all the way down, the cell references are automatically going to change to 2, 3, 4, and so these numbers are going to change automatically. So that's why I'm giving this cell reference here. Uh, the number of time periods is exactly the same, which is 60. And finally, the uh, present value is basically the loan amount, which is negative 1 multiplied by $59,000. And so now when you enter this, it tells you that 845.64. So basically, off this 1140.64, about $845 is going towards retiring the principal. Uh, if you want to find out how much is the interest paid, well, fortunately, there's another function which is equal to IPMT, which, as the name suggests, is short for interest payment. And so, again, if you invoke this function, it'll basically ask you for the rate, which is, again, 0 0.005. Uh, the period is month one, so this. And then the number of time periods is 60 again. And the loan amount is negative 1 multiplied by... Uh, fifty nine thousand oops fifty nine fifty nine thousand dollars and so when you do that uh, this comes out to two hundred and ninety five and so it shouldn't be surprising to you that if you do equal to this plus this in other words the principal payment plus the interest payment it should add up to exactly one one four zero which is basically your monthly payment the reason why this calculation is useful is because this can actually help you determine how much your loan balance is going to be at the end of month one. So if you borrowed $59,000 and then if you pay off 845.64 by the end of month one, then your loan balance is going to be equal to $59,000 minus the principal that you've just paid. So by the end of month one, the total principal that you're going to owe is going to be about 58,154.36. And now it's just a matter of just copying these formulae and pasting them. So specifically, if I now go to this formula right here and I copy this and then paste it over here, it basically tells me that in the second month, a slightly higher amount is going to go towards the principal because notice that this is the amount of payment going towards the principal in month two. And so similarly, if I copy this and then paste uh, this over here, the amount that is going towards interest is slightly less. And because this number right here, the loan balance, is simply the difference between the loan balance at the end of the previous month minus the principal paid, I can also copy this formula, control C and then control V over here, and I'll basically see how much the loan balance is going to be by the end of month two. So what I'm going to do now is basically copy this formula and carry it all the way down till month 60. Um, it's uh, going to show me some weird numbers right now. But then if I copy these and then carry these all the way down to month 60, and what you'll see is that by the end of month 60, the loan balance is going to be exactly zero because a total of... A total loan of 1134 will be due in the previous month. And if you account for the interest that you will accrue on it in the last month, then 1140 is going to take care of not only that principal amount, but also the interest of about $5.67 in the last month. And so this is how you can construct the complete amortization schedule, which not only shows you what your monthly payment is, but also shows you how your loan balance is changing during the term of the loan, and also what portion of your monthly payments is going towards paying off the principal and the interest. Constructing an amortization schedule in this manner also helps us figure out balloon payments. So specifically, consider part B of this problem. Suppose that two years after making the first payment, uh, you get a big bonus from your employer and you decide to pay off the loan, right? So in other words, you don't want to wait the full five years. You want to pay off the loan after roughly two years. 
Now your bank, or in this case, the BMW dealership might say, look, actually there's a prepayment penalty. We were, we were counting on all those interest payments that you were gonna make to us over the next five years. But if you're prepaying us, then we kind of lose out on that. So you're gonna have to pay us not only the outstanding loan balance, but 1% on top of that. Uh, so there's a prepayment penalty of 1%, which is based on the loan balance. So now the question is, if you have to retire all of this loan, how much will you need to pay off to retire the loan? So because you made your first payment on October 1st, 2019, we are going to count two years after that, which means that we're gonna go from month two onwards and two years after that. So basically what we're interested in finding out is that what is the loan balance that is outstanding at the end of the 26th month, so right around over here. So basically, uh, you just got a bonus from your employer, say at the end of October, end of October. And so you're like, okay, here's 1st November. I'm going to make my 1140.64 payment. And Mr. Bank, I'm done with it. Just tell me how much is my loan outstanding at this point. I know there's some outstanding balance. Just tell me what that is and I want to prepay it. Uh, now, the easy way of going about it is simply to go to the amortization schedule and just look at where 1st November 2021 is, which is right around here, which, as we said, is the end of the uh, 26th time period. And so at that point, your outstanding loan balance, according to this schedule, is basically uh, 35582.74. And so this is the amount that you owe. But of course, since there's a prepayment penalty, you're gonna basically pay a little bit more. So you're gonna take equal to 35,582.74 and multiply it by 1.01, uh, where the extra 1% is the prepayment penalty. So the actual amount that you're gonna end up paying is about $36,000 or more specifically 35,938.57. Um, the other way of thinking about why the loan balance is exactly 35,582.74, and this is important, especially for those of you who will not have the luxury to work in Excel. If I ask you, how can you determine uh, what the outstanding balance is at this point? One useful way of thinking about it is as follows. If you go to your bank and say, look, I wanna pay off, I wanna pay you off at this point, uh, the bank is going to say, look, you owe us all these payments out in the future in month 27, 28, 29, 30, all the way till 60. And these payments are of 1140.64. The total number of payments remaining, in fact, from this point on, from 1st November onwards, is exactly 34. Right. So if you do 60 minus 26, there are a 34 there are 34 payments of 1140.64 remaining. So now think about it. If you go to the bank, and this is very important, if you go to the bank and you're like, dude, I don't want to make these 1140.64 payments over the next 34 months to you. Just tell me how much do you want today? The, the bank, or in this case, well, the BMW dealership, they're basically gonna say, look, uh, it better be the case that those future payments that we were going to receive, what you give us today is exactly equivalent or the you basically give us the present value of those payments. And so the loan balance at this point has to be equal to the present value of those payments and, and the, the, the payments in this case is uh, 1140.64. And the, for the number of time periods for which the bank was gonna receive this was gonna be equal to 34. So this is how you're gonna go about it. You're gonna say equal to, the, the rate is gonna be 0 0.005. The number of time periods is 34, which is the remainder months. And the payments are, well, I'm gonna do negative one multiplied by uh, 1140.64. And if you do this math, this is going to give you exactly 35,582.74, which in fact is exactly equal to this outstanding loan balance at this point as well, which is, which is basically what our amortization schedule is showing you as well. And so this is how you can sort of s calculate the outstanding loan balance at a specific point in time. Very specifically, 
the outstanding loan balance at a point in time is simply equal to the present value of all the payments that remain after that point. And so long story short, this is how you can A, figure out the monthly payment on a loan. Second, construct a complete amortization schedule. And uh, C, figure out what your balloon payment needs to be if you want to retire the loan early, either by looking at the uh, amortization schedule or by calculating the present value of the remaining annuity payments.